Hi everyone. Um, I decided to do a few info sessions. Um, as some of you might know, I'm doing my PhD in nutrition and I'm using my Way to School program as part of my nutrition education uh, PhD project. And as I'm doing quite a bit of more reading, I find some of the readings very interesting that I thought I would like to share with you. So I'll start with uh, just a quick introduction to um, let you know how I usually approach a, you know, a, a topic. I always ask the question, how is this information useful um, and what practical implications um, it might provide to you? And because I was trained as an engineer, a food engineer uh, in my early stages, and I've always enjoyed um, the engineer part of anything, um, therefore I'm actually a problem solver, solver and I like uh, to do things and provide things that are practical and useful. So here's going to be a series of information that you might find that interesting, uh, that might spark your interest in reading more about a topic, um, or just to ask more questions. I don't have all the answers, just as uh, be aware of that, but I really like to provide information so we all can be more informed. Um, I'll be talking about weed, whole grains, nutrition, uh, farmers or farming related to wheat, um, some part of the markets that I understand, uh, milling, baking, and anything in between. So this specific info session that I'm providing is using a, uh, you know, different studies that I've read, but in particular, I'm going to be uh, providing information from the study from Miller um, et al. from 2022, that it's called Nutrition Economics for Analysis Supporting the Case for Whole Grain Consumption from the Journal of Cereal Science. And I definitely encourage you to find these papers. Some of them are open access and to read more on your own and to actually understand more whether, you know, whether providing the information they're providing as any research that we do, it's not perfect. It has limitations. So I encourage you to look for yourself to question the studies, the methodology um, that they have utilized. But at the end of the day, what we're all trying to do is provide information and inform us so we can continue um, you know, filling the gap of research and the information that we need to find out. So the main findings, I go straight to the chase, is um, some of the things that I found interesting from this paper was the statements that I'm going to be including here. Uh, diets low in whole grains uh, were the second leading diet-related cause of death behind high sodium. This is actually based on the global burden of disease study of 2019. Uh, most death related to diets uh, uh, low in whole grains were the results of cardiovascular disease. The second part that I found interesting was that potential healthcare cost savings. Um, the, these studies suggest that there is going to be a potential health healthcare cost savings for cardiovascular disease, coronary heart disease, cancer, and diabetes between hundreds of, million, of millions to billions of dollars in healthcare uh, expenses. The studies cannot be compared. That's what the um, authors found due to the differences in health economic modeling use, but they do provide enough information about the potential benefit Fits of increasing the consumption of whole grains to improve population health and potentially decrease healthcare costs associated with these diet related diseases. Um, the takeaways really that I want to present to you is this very powerful information that we have. One is that the U.S. has the highest healthcare cost per capita. Um, as you can see in the numbers here, we're, uh, we're Almost 17, about 17% 17 of the GDP is spent on healthcare costs. That's at about $10,624 per person. Uh, compared to, let's say, Finland, that is $4,516,000 per person. That is roughly 9%. In fact, as I say, we're the highest um, you know, country spending on healthcare costs. The next part that I think it's very interesting to see is, and, and there there, there is other information in this paper, so go ahead and read it. But I'm just giving you the part that I found the, the most impactful, which uh, is the potential uh, healthcare cost savings by increasing whole grains at 100% of the 
of the recommended intake by the dietary guidelines of Americans, which is roughly 48 grams per day. Um, and that says that uh, for cardiovascular disease is $21.9 billion, and for coronary heart disease is $14 billion in direct savings. Very important, this is assuming that it's an immediate adoption, but also very important that the predicted savings was significantly higher in the U.S. and Australia and Finland, uh, understanding that the U.S. healthcare cost is greater by a factor of two, even when the population difference was factored in. Um, I want to highlight two of uh, quotes that I found from this paper interesting and my comments and basically part of the solutions that they're providing. Uh, one quote, uh, swapping whole grains for refined grain foods in the diet may be viable solution. So my opinion, yes, I agree. As soon as whole grain foods become widely available, price point is not a barrier and flavor and texture are improved. Comment two, this is a quote from the study, government sponsored feeding programs represent an opportunity to promote public health and driving down healthcare costs by instituting whole grain requirements for grain foods. Yes, I 100% agree with this statement also. However, USDA whole grain food requirements continue to be reduced where schools might not require offering 100% of the time whole grains but only 80%. That means that in the five days that they have, uh, they offer the grain-based foods, one day they might choose to say, uh, no, we're uh, actually, we're offering uh, refined grains uh, and rather than offering the whole grain and rich grains um, that were in implemented before. So in addition, my first-hand observation of kids eating whole grain foods at the schools with our Wheat to School program and in collaboration with our uh, food service director is that most of the whole grain foods, foods um, that the children are offered right now, they're not very welcome by the children. They discard them. They find them that they do not taste good. So that's the first impression that I have when I ask them, do you like those whole grain foods? And I've seen them. And I've also have read um, enough information in research that says that the food waste of whole grains is actually high. Now, I've seen also firsthand that, um, that when you improve those whole grain products, making them freshly made 100% whole wheat as we have seen, uh, whether that has been a tortilla, a muffin, or a waffle, um, as I say in collaboration with the schools that we work with, the kids absolutely love them. And here's just one uh, of our tasting uh, graph that I can provide to you where children were testing our Padwin 100% whole wheat muffin, and most of them say they loved it. So bottom line, uh, what I want to say with these is that I'm encouraged to see that there, there are studies out there that provides information or enough information for us to dig deeper that there could be a healthcare cost savings by increasing whole grain consumption. More importantly to me is how can we make this practical and useful to the people who are in this case, let's say, feeding the children at schools, that they can get access to more freshly made whole grain products or they can make them in the school so the children are not only being offered, but actually consuming those whole grain products and even farther that they will remember the taste, the texture, the flavor of those whole grain products that are so good that they'll carry that into adulthood to continue consuming whole grain products. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, we know it's possible and I encourage you to always stay curious, to ask questions and to, um, to just uh, help to move forward anything you can for uh, the whole grain movement. Thank you, and I'm Claudia Carter.